Faith Lutheran Church. We're based out of Shelton, Washington. Faith Lutheran Church is a beloved, affirming congregation of the ELCA. We're growing closer to and more like Jesus, making Christ known for the sake of the world. You can learn more about faith at our website, www.faithshelton.org. I want to thank you for listening today. Today's Christmas Eve message focuses in on the promise of peace on earth. The prophets point to it, the angels sing about it, peacemakers are blessed, the Spirit breathes a peace that passes understanding, and Jesus, the Bible says, is our peace. A message of peace, however, flies in the face of what is a rather unpeaceful time in an unpeaceful world among unpeaceful people, warring nations, tribes, and tongues, ideologies, economic priorities, and political preferences. The Bible itself is a history of conflict, enmity, strife, and division. And the course of human history re remains largely unchanged, or as the saying goes, life is just one damn thing after another. Still, here we are. We gather on yet another Christmas Eve, masks and all. We recall again the story of a child in a manger and a promise of peace on earth. I think the Holy Spirit has a good word for us today. So please open your Bible to the story of the birth of Jesus, as told in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. And let's start with prayer. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Amen. Luke, chapter 2, the first verse. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to, in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the angel says to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, the angel says. You will find a baby wrapped in rags, lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. A newborn baby wrapped in rags, lying in a manger. This was a sign for the shepherds, a symbol of peace on earth. Babies continue to symbolize peace. Well, at least the sleeping ones do. Think about the iconic Madonna, the symbol of Christmas, Mary holding the baby Jesus. It's a symbol of peace. Along with some other symbols of peace. I got to thinking of one symbol of peace. When I raise my hands up in the air or wave a white flag or throw in the towel, that's, my, that's a sign of peace, of surrender. I think back on, on much of the imagery of Noah's Ark, the rainbow in the sky, the dove, the olive branch. These are all symbols of peace. 
particularly when it comes to God's attitude toward us, an attitude of peace toward humanity. And then there's the peace sign, two fingers spread apart, palm facing out, a symbol marking the Allied victory in World War II, peace on earth, peace in our time. And then, then there's the iconic peace symbol, right? That circle holding a vertical line and two vectors emerging from the middle of the circle angled downward. Anyone here familiar with the history of this symbol? Well, it turns out that its creator was an anti-nuclear protester named Gerald Holtham. Back in 1958, he was part of a British campaign for nuclear disarmament, the CND it was called. Within a circle representing the world, he inserted a semaphore. That's a kind of Morse code using flags. Uh, inserted a semaphore for the letter N, both flags held down and angled out from the body, and a D, one flag pointing up, the other pointing down. These initials, N, D, standing for nuclear disarmament. Well, the symbol went viral, you might say, and it was adopted as a more general symbol for peace, adorning signs and T-shirts and old hippie-driven VW vans everywhere. Well, years later, Holton revealed that the inspiration for the symbol was much more personal than that. So let me do my best Paul Harvey imitation and tell you the rest of the story. It seems that Holtham at the time was despaired that so many symbols of peace had been appropriated by those who made war. For many, even the Christian cross had become synonymous with crusades and Hiroshima. Meanwhile, Stalin was using the image of a dove to bless his nuclear buildup. I was in deep despair, Holtham wrote later. He said, I drew myself, the representative of an individual in despair, with hands palm outstretched outwards and downwards in the manner of Goya's peasant before the firing squad, he writes. I formalized the drawing into a line and put a circle around it. It was ridiculous at first and such a puny thing. Still, he had made it into a small pin, wore a jacket that day. At a store later on that day, a woman remarked about the pin, and when he looked at, down at it this time, he immediately saw that semaphore, an N and a D, and the circle representing the planet, global nuclear disarmament. And yet, for Holtham, the symbol was so much more than that. It was a symbol, uh, it was a mirror, showing the neck, the body, arms outstretched. The meaning of the symbol is that the call for peace was and is personal. The responsibility for peace is also personal. A sentiment captured in a song written at about the same time in history. Remember? Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Well, I was curious about the reference to Goya's peasant before the firing squad. So I googled it. It turns out Francisco Goya was an early 19th century painter from Spain. The painting is called The Third of May, 1808, and it depicts a scene from Napoleon's invasion of Spain. The peasant actually has his hands raised in surrender, pleading for mercy, grieving his fallen comrades, powerless, mortal, and alone. And that is how the world is, one damn thing after another. We wring our hands about political infighting and pandemic protocols. We wonder if we will ever see peace on earth. This longing for peace stretches across human history. We lament global floods and global warming, praying for some kind of a rainbow, a sign of hope, a sign that we won't destroy ourselves, a sign that God will not give up on us peace on earth when we're threatened by nukes and Nazis or a firing squad, helpless, alone, and puny. This peace symbol also brings to my mind another scene, another scene in Luke's gospel, this one at the very end, when the risen Jesus Christ appears to his disciples 
They, like Holtam and the Goya peasant, were despairing, grieving, all alone. Jesus had died, Rome had won, they had lost, their cause was lost. But then Jesus appears to them. And he echoes the promise of the angels three decades earlier. Peace be with you, he says to them. And then he reaches out to them with hands, palm outstretched outwards and downwards to show them the scars on his hands from the nails on the cross. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, he tells them. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, he tells them. And lo, I am with you always, he tells them. This is the promise of the gospel. This is the Christian hope that Christ Jesus is our peace. That's what Paul tells a congregation that he served that saw, himself, saw itself divided over nationality and religious beliefs. It means that in Christ there is no longer any divisions that matter, neither Jew nor Greek nor anything in between, neither slave nor free nor anything in between, neither male nor female nor anything in between. In Christ, peace on earth has been accomplished. For with God our creator, family all are we. Christ has shown us how to be peacemakers. We surrender like he did. We sacrifice like he did. We live in solidarity with the poor and oppressed, like he did. As the song says, let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. This is to walk in the way of Christ. Because in fact, Christ Jesus has revealed the very nature of God. A God who demonstrates love and peacemaking by making a dwelling among us, born among us a child. A God who surrendered any claim to rights or privileges. A God who in Christ laid down his life, sacrificing his for ours and raising from the, us from the dead to, to, to lead us in pathways of peace, in solidarity with the underside of humanity, the victims of violence, the have-nots and the never-wills. Lo, I am with you always, he says. And so in response to the gift and the promise of Christmas, my prayer today May we be imitators of Christ, instruments of God's peace, arms outstretched to show and to sacrifice and to share, to serve and to surrender, peacemakers, every one of us, all for the sake of the true peace who passes all understanding to the glory of God. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. Amen? Amen. Merry Christmas, y'all. Go to our website, www.faithshelton.org, to find more resources for growing closer to and more like Jesus. Sign up for our weekly emails, like us on Facebook, make a financial donation to faith, subscribe to the podcast, you know the drill. Thank you, Chaz, for your production work every week. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.